my gosh, my tooth hurts a lot. Oh my gosh, I need help. Oh, okay. Dentist office oh, of ice. I don't know where is that. Oh my. Hello. Good morning, doctor. Oh. Oh. You have to say. Oh yes, a lot. Welcome. I'm, you, you, you're my first victim. My name is Doctor. Victim. My first patient. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. My, my name is Doctor Sue. Okay, so doctor. Please come sit down here. Thank you. I'm thank you. Very happy to treat you. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. I think it's. Okay, doctor. Okay, so I'm very happy to see you. I'm going to serve you today. I'm, I'm very happy. You are my first victim. I, I mean, my, my first patient. I'm Jesus sorry. Christ. I'm sorry. Help me out. So, um, uh, uh, let me get my gloves on because I want to be healthy for you, you know. Is gloves. it sore? How long has it been sore? Oh, two weeks. Two weeks already. You should yes. have come earlier, man. I need the money. Uh, I need the money. Okay, um, I need help. Oh, my goodness. I got two oh, my word. left hand gloves. Okay, that, never mind, never mind. But don't worry, I got the, I, I really studied very well. It's a book, of, big book of dentistry. Okay. Okay? So first thing, first, ooh. Look at this. Oh, all my knowledge just fell to the ground. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, uh, okay. I, I have to knock you out because it's very, very painful, you know. What? You have to what? I, I, I have to put you to sleep. So no. please, please lie, please no, lie down. No, no, no way. Are you, are you really well, a well, dentist? Or? How else am I going to solve the problem, man? Let me, what? let me, let me get ready here. Oh no! Are you really a dentist, or? Yeah, of course I'm dentist. Here's the Where book. Did you get I, told, I told you, here's the book. No, no, no. I, I'm no. No, my so see, it's the drill, but it's small. It's, no. it's going to work really well. No, thank you so I've much. I watched the YouTube, man. Oh no! <laughs> no oh, way. come on! No, no. Thank you, thank you so much. No, I'll leave. Oh my gosh, help me out. Some people, you know, they're just not satisfied with anything. Okay, people, here's the, here's the deal. I don't know how long you've been at Christ for the Nations, but even if you started this January, you already have more formal training than most of the pastors in the world. It's calculated that less than 5% of pastors worldwide has had any formal training. Now imagine you go to a dentist and this kind of thing happens now. Of course, this is extreme. But the Bible is the most important book in the world, in the universe. And people teach the Bible and they have no formal training of how to teach the Bible. Watching YouTube is not gonna cut it. You need formal training, right? So that's the reason why Gordon Lindsay believed in Bible training centers. Long before he started Christ for the Nations, he helped Bible schools in various countries, in Thailand, in Peru, in Brazil, in Mexico, in Sri Lanka, and some of those schools still exist since the late, late 50s and early 60s. He believed in formal training. He started the Bible correspondence course that had a whole lot of people studying the Bible by correspondence because he knew that it's important that there are some people in charge that can train and disciple the people in their churches and can train and provide pastors with adequate training to do the work. In many cases, people that are in ministry in, in, in developing nations like, like uh, United States of America, they go through seven years of training to be able to teach the Bible well to counsel, to do marriages, to do funerals, weddings and funerals and the like. Now, not everybody needs seven years of training, but every person that is called a pastor by whichever name needs to have some formal training. That's why we have an association of Bible schools. We are networking with Bible schools all over the world to make sure that the Bible, Bible school produces pastors who can make disciples in their congregations and train their people to make disciples. I've been to many of these Bible schools. Some of them are very basic. Some of them are elaborate, but they fulfill one purpose. They are equipping people for the work of pastoring, for, for the work of shepherding. Now, not all of you will go into pastoring. I know that. It's not expected that all of you will go into pastoring, but think about it. 95% of people calling themselves pastors or priests or bishops or so have no formal training. And, and quite frankly, many of them do not even have access to watch YouTube to help them to gain, gain some understanding.
They think if they have the book and the anointing, those are enough. They're not. As important as they are, they're not. We need Bible schools all over the world to train pastors to help bring in the end time harvest. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel will be preached in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the world will come. So I'm inviting you today to support the Christ for the Nations Association of Bible Schools. There are different ways that you can give. We have 50 Bible schools, more or less some of them have recently closed down for various reasons. But please help us to help them to train the pastors that are so necessary to continue the work of the ministry and to, and to, and to disciple and teach, te teach people the Bible properly. You can come forward and put your offering. If you, if you use an envelope or you want to use cash, put it in the buckets here, please. All right, let us pray. Father, we thank you for Christ for the Nations Institute and the opportunity that all of us have here to be taught the word of God. And we pray for all Bible schools and seminaries and colleges by whichever name they go all across the world that are teaching people how to teach the Word of God. And we pray that those will be multiplied and multiplied not only in number but in effectiveness and in reaching the students to send them out in the into the harvest field to make disciples. I pray that you will bless everybody that's able to give today and those that are not able to give because of other commitments that they have Father, I pray that you will continue to not only enable to give, but to have the compassion for those who sit under the teachings of people that are likely to teach half-truths and heresies. Let us change that as much as we can. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning. How are you guys? All right, we have an exciting morning. Let's give it up one more time for the International Ministries Department and Nikki <clears throat> and Lucas. We're very diverse here at CFNI. Anyway, thank you guys for giving. We have something special for you guys this morning. It's a panel. We know you guys are going to like it. You guys are going to absolutely enjoy it because it's all about dating and relationships. All right. So because time is going, I'm going to invite the panelists. Please come on up quickly. Come on up, guys. Come on up. Welcome the team. popular. <laughs> I think they all love Miss Renee, right? Is it Miss Renee? Right. <laughs> Miss Renee says, give it to Jesus, give it to Jesus. All right, so you've heard, the, you've heard the, the, the phrase here, brides for the nations, right? So it's not an official thing from CFNI, but anyway, you guys use it culturally. So we want to explore today what dating is, because we know Loving is a big thing here at CFNI. Getting to know the opposite sex is a big thing here at CFNI. We know we talk academics to you guys, and we talk worship to you guys, and we talk prayer to you guys, and we talk all that. But we know beneath all that, there is this underlying thing about finding the right person. Is this the right person? Is this not the right person? So today we want to explore that. But before I get into that, can we give it up to Golan for allowing us to have this panel? Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. 
in light of time. So lean back and let's enjoy this session this morning, all right? And I want you guys to tune in. Don't tune out. Tune in. Lean back into this. Because you've heard me say this before. You might not be at this place right now. Doesn't mean you won't be there next year. You might not be here today, but doesn't mean you won't be there the next five years. So glean the wisdom that you will hear today. All right, so let's begin. Dating. How would you define dating? Please, anybody can jump in anytime. Um, if I may, <laughs> I think that if you're going on dates, you're dating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I know this is profound because there's so many different definitions, but the truth of the matter is if you have gone on the get to know, okay, hey, let's go get coffee and get to know each other, whatever, let's get a burger. Um, and then you go out again, you're dating. It doesn't mean that you are in the process of engagement or marriage, but if you are asking me what is dating, you're going on dates, right. getting to know each other. No, that's good, but I, I don't feel like you have defined it though. We're getting into stuff. No, that's good, but because there are people from other nations here, because in Jamaica, we didn't even use the word dating. So I don't know if someone from, let's say, South America or Africa knows what dating is. So, because you can go out doesn't necessarily mean that you are dating. So give me a, a framework. Somebody give me an idea of what would you say it is. You're interested in a person. And so you are trying to spend more time with that person. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Uh, yeah, please. yeah. And I'm not saying any answer is necessarily right or wrong. I'm just mindful of people from other cultures because they might not use that word. Is what I'm saying? So that's good that you actually explain it like that. Yeah. So um, being, having gone through Bible school, um, there's a few words that have been thrown around, which is courting mm -hmm. is one. I think <laughs> dating is another. Um, Go and then, what was that? Going steady. Yeah. <laughs> Go on steady. Um, and then I think there is being is in a relationship. So I, in my opinion, <laughs> dating and, and again, you'll hear multiple opinions here, but my opinion, dating and courting is similar um, in that I, we both have recognized, okay, this is my husband, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we both have recognized, okay, we have feelings for each other, we're attracted to each other, and so now we're taking time to be intentional and getting to know each other more. Because when you date, you date to marry, that's my opinion, and so I'm trying to see, are you the best candidate? Are you gonna be like the best husband to me? And vice versa, in his opinion. So for me, dating, you're taking intentional time aside, saying no to everyone else that you maybe thought were cute, um, and having in this exclusivity between um, yourself and another person. So do you all share the idea, I like that word, exclusivity. Do you all share the idea that dating is exclusive? Because I have heard, and I could be wrong, but I have heard people say, you know what, I'm dating because I'm getting to know. So they will go out on multiple dates with different people because <laughs> for them, for them they're getting to know someone. Do you guys agree with that? Do you, do you guys not? Or is it purely exclusive? Yeah, if you're going out with a bunch of people, you're, you're having friends. You're not, you're not even serious. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, hey, you're not, that's, or you're playing the field, you know, you, you know. Get off the field. I mean, field. you know, yeah, it should be exclusive. Okay. It should be one person. So, so we talked about this yesterday. Like, yeah. you're talking about D DTR, define the relationship. Yeah. I think I think we're kind of getting at the point that you have a conversation like, I like you, do you like me? Like, mm -hmm. let's, let's fill this out. Let's see how this goes. That's like, from there, you're dating. Before yeah. that, if you're just hanging out with friends, you're yeah. just friends. Yeah. If you're hanging out one-on-one -on -one all the time and you're not like being intentional about it, then you're right. kind of dating, but you're not calling it dating. Right. So, we're he yes. so we're hearing good terms. Yeah. We're hearing good terms here. So I'm hearing exclusivity. Yeah. Yes. I'm hearing communication. Yes. That means if you say to the opposite sex, let's go to Starbucks, and you guys went to Starbucks for five times. <laughs> Based upon what I'm hearing, doesn't mean that you are dating because you haven't been exclusive and you haven't communicated that you are defining what it is. That's what you're saying. It's, it's different for everyone, but I think there has to be a conversation at some point. 
at some yeah. point. Okay, so that leads me to the question. At what point in time do you define it? Is it after six Starbucks? Is it after 10 Starbucks? Is it after three months? Is it after six months? At what point in time do you say, you know what, I, I, I kind of need to know what we have right here. At what, what point in time? Well, I think that it's less about the timeline and more so about your intentionality. Yeah. Like if, if this, if I like this guy and he obviously likes me. And when I say obviously, let's be real guys. You just know when something shifts in your friendship, right. okay? Right. You know when something shifts and you're like, I don't know why it looked at me that way. <laughs> Whoa. Um, that is the point that I believe that when you guys go out that next time, I believe that there should be some level of communication, right. okay? And it doesn't mean you have to decide you're gonna get married now. You're, hey, let me introduce you to my mom now because we've exchanged looks. Um, but I believe that when there's a shift, it's always better to communicate, hey, what is that? What was that? Um, are you feeling this? Because I am. And if they say no, and that's okay. You're learning communication. But Becca made this point yesterday, actually. You, when you date your best friend, because I am with Becca, um, that is how it should be. You should date your best friend. So I did. I know that's what they did, obviously. Um, there is already a level of healthy trust and communication within your friendship. And I believe that's why it's important to have healthy girl and girl friendships. Your roommates are helping you learn how to even have healthy communication so that when that time does come with a guy and you're starting to like each other, you're like, okay, I know how to communicate, something shifted, I need to bring this up. Or hey, guys, you bring it up, okay? Hello. A girl wants to be led, that's the truth. If you wanna impress a woman, Hello. you, you Hello. lead, you start that conversation, okay? <laughs> Amen. All right, you guys are enjoying this. I have a question right, right there. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> I'm watching, <laughs> somebody's getting excited, a little too excited. All right, what about people who they hide their relation, they hide their, their expressions? Woo, because you know those people exist. You can go to 10 Starbucks with them, 10, 10, 10. And then nothing changes because they maintain form. I remember a few years ago, there was a student here. I mean, she went out with the guy about 15 times. I mean, out. But she never showed anything, and the guy thought she was never interested in him. So what do you do in a case like that where you have an extended time, but there is nothing that has changed in terms of attraction? Wait, in terms of attraction? Yes, nothing changes oh. in terms of attraction. Yes, because you built your story, the story that you just said, you built it around. You know when something changes. I'm saying, what if nothing changes? but you're still going out, what do you do then? I, I think you really have to communicate. Like what she was saying, like communication is very important. Like when we were friends, we were friends for two years and I had liked her first. There was no change for her. Like there was a lot of trying, but- Okay, so she didn't show it. No, she did not. And I got to the point where it's like, I love the friendship and I'm okay if this is just a friendship. And like, I didn't know where it was gonna go. And so we got to the point where she kind of was like, I couldn't tell if she liked me or not, but I was at the point where like, if she does, she does. If she doesn't, it's whatever. Oh, okay. But, because she was kind of at the point where we were kind of hanging out a lot more. We were more intentional. There was some flirting going on. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I'm like. Becca said, what is that? <laughs> like, I'm like, I was in the friend zone, then the family zone. What is this zone? Like that, that's, that's, that's the progression it was. Okay. When you're friends for a while, it becomes family. It's, yeah. it's hard to get out of that. Becca, let me ask you this. Um, oh, why, why were you hiding it? Or did you have feelings in your talk? Um, so I genuinely thought he was my brother. Um, <laughs> I, do, you see what, do you see what I'm this saying? Is so encouraging These things to happen. It's great. And you don't know, you can't perceive it. I did, I did. It was me, him, and then my now brother-in-law, EJ. It was like, we would always hang out. We have a group of friends. I know y'all know EJ. Um, and so I was like, this is family, you know? And so I- She told me that, to my face. She told me that. <laughs> 
I did. I called him the homie. I would, I would talk about a lot of things with him. <laughs> There's hope if you're in that situation. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So for me, when I finally like this is two years in, um, I started to be like, why is Alex always around when I get like words about my future or like I was I was in YFN and he. I would be, I was in the, on the worship team in YFN and I would look up in the balcony and there he was worshiping. And I was like, okay, like, why is he everywhere where the Lord is? Uh. <laughs> yeah. This is a little bit too much fire up here, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so it was around this time that I was like, I think he might like me, but no, like, he's my brother. Like, I can't go that I can't go there. And I had multiple conversations with my best friend about this. She knew um, that he liked me, but she's a great friend to both of us, so she kept it. Um, but I think it was, it, it just happened naturally. Gen like, it was in... Um, it was in our last year of CFNI. We were hanging out a lot, like, with other people, and it just came naturally. Like, I started to have feelings, and I started to flirt with Alex, not even knowing what I was doing, and to the point where I had people be like, hey, what are you doing? Um, you, you don't act that way. Why are you acting that way? And so at that point is when we hung out, because that was normal for us, and he brought up DTR, like, hey, how would you define our relationship? Oh, look at Alex. Yeah. You go, Alex. No, no. He did it, it sounds great. <laughs> But I brought it up, and she said, "You really want to talk about this right now?" And I'm like, okay. "I was driving. I was driving. I didn't. I was like, I cannot." It was cannot. a long car ride. This is so let me that. ask you guys. Pause right there. How many of you guys have been in a situation like this where you have been friends with someone for a few weeks, months, and then you realize that you start to like them? <laughs> okay, come on, put the hands up. Let, let, let us see. Was it an awkward situation for you guys? Very awkward. Okay, so how awkward was it for you when you realized, oh my God, what is happening here? What? It was so... How awkward was it? <laughs> I want to know. It, okay. It was, it was awkward for me because I had to be normal because this is my really close friend that I just call a brother. So I had to be normal, but I'm like internally having all of these feelings. Yeah. And so it was, it was awkward. Like this was around like the 50-50 and we were both serving a lot. And so we were around each other a lot that whole time. And I started acting weird. And I was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like, oh, what is yeah. happening? It, I'm it cool, It went from I'm cool. us giving each other like hugs to her giving me a fist bump. <laughs> Cause I was so uncomfortable. I was like, oh, I have all these feelings. I don't know what to do with them. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's look at some of the red flags in dating. Ooh, somebody say amen right there. Somebody say amen. Oh, the devils pop up in dating. All right, what are some of the red flags? Like you're in dating and you say, no, that is not right. That, that, that shouldn't be. <laughs> Miss Renee is like, what's a red flag? <laughs> she knows. What's the red flags? Yeah, like things that, mm. you know, they pop up while you're dating and you say, no, there's no way. I don't, Can I don't we want be to real? Be... Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pray the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Miss Renee. <laughs> you know, guys, say for instance, you guys, a bunch of you go to see a movie. I don't know go to a restaurant and you're sitting at the table and you feel something on your leg. Not the Holy Spirit. And, and you know it's not. The... <laughs> 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 and you look to the side and somebody's grinning. Okay, that's a red flag. You're talking about somebody's hand, right? Yeah, I'm talking about somebody's hand. <laughs> She, did, she didn't spell it all. <laughs> yeah. And you know, at that moment, you need to say, excuse me? No. Come on, come on. You can pick up their hand, whether it's a girl or a guy, because girls are bold nowadays. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. That's true. <laughs> Just pick up the hand and say no. No, you have to respect me. 
And that doesn't mean that that's not necessarily your husband or your wife, but you need to make them respect you, make them honor you. So crossing yeah. physical boundaries, sexual boundaries is an absolute no-no is what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> even if you weren't here at college, you're a Christian. <laughs> you make them keep their hands to themselves. Otherwise, one thing's going to lead to another. You're going to have some issues <laughs> and challenges that you don't want. You know, this flesh, it doesn't take much to get it riled, guys. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's reality. It doesn't take much. And you have to use wisdom because you want to keep yourself before the Lord so that when you do get married, you can offer yourself to your husband, your wife. That's true. You know? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Red, red flags, red flags, because typically these things pop up when you're getting to know someone. You see things that you're like, what in the world? And I, I knew you were beautiful, I knew you were handsome, but what is this? So what are some of the red flags that you guys have seen or have heard of? I would say a red flag is if that other person doesn't have friends or any type of they're not submitted to any kind of covering, like either yeah. a pastor or they don't have, Ooh, they don't keep on. good people around them closely. Um, if you're with someone who's very isolated, then your interactions are gonna be isolated. And Proverbs says, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desires. Ooh, and on, love, Christiana. love does not seek its own desires. Love seeks to give, love seeks to protect, love seeks not to harm. And so understand that if you are in communication with someone that constantly wants you alone, or they constantly don't want to include other people, or hey, I don't really want to go to a church, like I am hurt. I understand church, or I was a PK, all these things. People are not perfect, I understand. But the quality of being submitted, you want, ladies, you, we are called to be submitted to our husbands. It doesn't mean that we are beneath them and we are these lowly little creatures. What it means is that we're called to trust them, <clears throat> excuse me, we're called to trust them to lead and let them lead. And men, you guys, if you, when you're submitted in your relationship and you're submitted under a covering, you are showing a woman, hey, I can trust you. You can trust me because I am submitted. I am trying. I'm trying to hear from the Lord for our family, for our household. And so I would say, man, woman, understand that if you are isolating or you don't have good friends or you don't have a good pastor over you, then um, that's, that's a big red flag in my opinion. Well, no, that's good. I appreciate it. You said that very well. Anybody here like that? That you like so yeah, that you like someone and you pay attention to, are they submitted, you know, are you submitted to, to a leader? Are you submitted under leadership? Do you guys pay attention to that? Or do you only look and say, oh, you know, he's handsome or oh, she is gorgeous. Do you pay attention to that? Because that's a very, very good point. Another red flag. I, couldn't, I can't remember what I said exactly yesterday, but here's a more subtle red flag. I read some book about dating a long time ago. It was like the other person you watch as you're dating, as you're getting to know, watch how they treat their friends, watch how they treat their family members, right, and yeah. watch how they treat strangers. Right. And if you can see some consistency in how they behave and how they treat other people, that's kind of a good indicator of their character. Amen. So if they're real nice to friends and, and they're nice to family, but they're like rude or whatever to strangers, like servants, servers in like restaurants no, or stuff like that, so those are like some little subtle red flags for me, like, no. Yes. Red flags, what about dealing with a narcissist? I mean, because you do have those people. Did I, did I just say that? <laughs> yeah, any, somebody, who said yes? Because you're getting to know somebody and it's all about them. Have you guys ever been through that? Oh Lord, somebody That's wave your hand. Love, somebody though. wave your hand, okay. That's not just love, but it's all about you. Yes. Anybody wants to touch that? Um, I think a red flag is whenever you start to see like, codependent um, habits, where it's like you always have to be together, you always have to do everything together, you can't go here without me, or or can, that can even fall into the controlling thing, right? Like, I don't want you talking to that person, yeah, or I don't want you going there anymore, like, no, you're going to come to church with me now, You're forget your old church, you know, like, 
different things like that, like codependency and controlling um, things, you can pick up on that really quickly um, just by seeing how someone um, conducts their time and their time management, you know, like why, why do we have to be together like 17 hours in a day? Like, why can't you hang out with your friends and I'll hang out with mine? And then we'll meet in the middle sometimes, you know? Like, yeah. I think that's a, a, a red flag as well. Okay, good, let's, let, let's move on. What does accountability look like while you are dating? When the emotions are high and, and testosterone is raging, what does accountability look like? And estrogen too. What does accountability look like? Um, I would say accountability, I mean, granted, we didn't really have the best accountability as a couple. Like, we had more accountability separate. Like, I would go to some people that I trusted and went for leadership and she would do the same, but we never really had covering over the couple, like us together. And so one thing I learned in now that we're married and like realizing, oh wow, we should have like had accountability is realizing accountability isn't just you going to someone for wisdom, but it's you going to them for correction. Cause yeah. I think sometimes we think of accountability like, oh, I go to this person, they're gonna give me advice and they're gonna check up on me whenever things are going wonky. They don't know what's going on in your relationship if you don't tell them. Like accountability is you saying, hey, this is how we're doing. This is how I'm feeling. This is how, like giving direction to where you're at at all times and being able to be corrected. Because sometimes we'll go to accountability and say, hey, this is how I feel. Like, I don't know if I should be alone with my girlfriend right now. Yeah. I'm just feeling some sort of way about it. And they give you correction. You're like, I don't really agree with that. I'm just gonna go do what I'm doing. It's like, that's not accountability. That's just you going to, for someone to agree with what you're doing. Yeah, no, that's and nice. so accountability really looks like seeking wisdom and seeking correction, no matter how you feel about the correction. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Anyone else? I have so many questions to ask you guys. Anyone else? Um, I would say, first of all, in the context of Sif and I, um, accountability can be a very, like, it's not a well-defined thing. And so I didn't know that I could have accountability in my relationship because I just thought that it meant that you were just gonna get in trouble when you messed up. I didn't know that accountability was a friend. I didn't know accountability was a leader that is investing in you and, and loving you through your mistakes as well. Um, and so I will say that, especially in the context of CFNI, understand guys that I know there's a lot of different rules that we all do or don't agree with, whatever it might be, but accountability is not trying to make a perfect person or a perfect relationship. It's trying to make a submitted person because that is what is going to last after CFNI. That's what's going to last after, you know, in your next jobs, in your ministry. God's not looking for perfect people. And so understand that's even the importance of not being with someone who's super isolated. If they're comfortable alone, then they're never gonna be comfortable being accountable. And now we see the effects of so many leaders who were not surrounded by accountability in their weak spots, you know? They decided to hide, they decided to put something on, they decided to tell their friends that would encourage them in their weaknesses versus just bringing it into the light and saying, hey, bro, I'm struggling. Like, and if I can be super real, you need to be able to have someone that you can go to and say, hey, my sex drive right now is super high and I cannot be alone with this person right now. We should not go out after dark. We should not be alone. We need to bring a friend, all these things. And it's not weakness to do that, it's wisdom. And when you see leaders failing later on, I know that each and every one of them have the Holy Spirit within them and they wish that in the small things that they had just asked someone for help. Hey, can you just watch out for me? being your brother's keeper. And so I think accountability is learning that it's safe to fail and finding people it's safe to fail with, but also being willing to be corrected by this person. Aren't they all so good? Oh, come on, give it up for them. This team is really, really good. All right, there's a natural, Golan, I wish, wish we had two hours for this. There's a natural tendency when you're dating someone to want to be alone. It, it's normal, it's natural. Where do you allow that natural desire to be in other words where are the places that you should be alone where are the places that you should not be alone <laughs> don't go to isolated places don't go to isolated places I mean you can go to parks you know you can go to coffee shops you can go to the zoo 
<laughs> I don't know, but I'm saying, you know, you don't go to isolated spots and places where it's dark and you're alone and the atmosphere is perfect and the sun is just perfect and, or the moon is perfect and the enemy is planning something, you know, and we have to be wise, you know, you guys, it's not wrong to like somebody. Amen. 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 It's not wrong to have feelings for somebody. The, the, the Holy Spirit, the Lord made us like that. It's okay. It just has to be done decent and in order. And sometimes we make mistakes. It's okay. Get up, repent, dust yourself off, and start back. But when you make a mistake, don't keep going back and keep falling and keep falling and keep falling because you're getting weaker and you're getting weaker before you know it, you'll be in the world. <laughs> you know, you, you've, you've got to come to the place where, like, I like the way she said it, find somebody that you can talk to, that you can trust, you know, go to somebody, open up, you know, not a, not a, not, not a, not a girlfriend that's going to say, oh, girl, that's okay. That's okay, girl. Go on and get it on. Uh, <laughs> Miss Renee. That's, 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 not, that's not your friend. That's where we say praise the Lord right there, right? That's not your friend. It's true. Your friend is going to tell you truth. Yes. Because they love you and they're going to give you what's right. Amen. All right. Amen. No, thank you. That's good. In a Bible school, when, when you mix spirituality, and theology with relationships. Sometimes it can be dangerous. No, it's true. Outside, you see where I'm going with this one? Outside when you like someone, yeah, that's one thing. But in church, people have a way to say, you know what, the Lord told me. Or, <laughs> or I just feel in my spirit that, you know, or I got a prophetic word from somebody. Somebody talk to me about that. When you mix that spirituality in the dating zone, how do you handle that? Every person that prophesies to you is not prophesying from God. Amen. Amen. I had a prophecy about a guy and I married him. We fell before I married him. I did not love him. I married him because it was prophesied to me. And for 16 years, I went through abuse. But I didn't believe in divorce. You guys, that's, you know, that's the thing in the bucket. But um, you don't listen to everybody's prophecy. A prophecy should be a word that's a confirmation that the Holy Spirit already spoke to you. You have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. And he should be talking to you. If you like a person, take it to the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Ask the Lord what he thinks about it. And see what the Holy Spirit says to you. And the Holy Spirit will send confirmations. He'll send confirmations. Yeah. You know, it's just that simple. I'm going to tell you something else. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will choose a wife or a husband for you, and you don't want them. Because you don't like the way they look. <laughs> you don't like the way they talk. They're not cute enough. They don't have the right size. It's true. I've seen it. I've seen it. You know, and so you, you got to listen to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit. He will lead you and guide you in all things. At what point in time, thank you, at what point in time in the dating process do you say, I feel like I can marry this person. I feel like I want to be with this person for the rest of my life. In other words, what are the cumulative things that you would have seen so far that you make that decision? I mean, it's not like a formula with a light switch, like, okay, now we're ready. I think... That's fine. I think <laughs> if you determine, as you're dating, as you're getting to know each other, yeah. you're, you're looking to determine some things, like, can I spend the rest of my life with this person? Obviously, you're walking with the Lord. You're going to the Lord these things, but for yourself, you're looking at... Are your values, are your morals aligned? Are your, is your faith aligned? Because if you're, go, if you're trying to get, if you catch feelings for someone who's headed this direction, you're headed this direction, it might be great right here, but it's gonna end up <laughs> right. over here. That's so right. you gotta find those commonalities in your morality and your faith 
and in your life direction, I think. I think the natural light switch, like, yeah, this is someone I can marry, will come if you yeah. find someone where you're kind of walking like that. But how many, how many people think about that, though? Because, you know, as human beings, we typically focus on the love part. Oh, I, I feel like I want to marry this person. How many people pay attention to values? Yeah. Wave your hands. How many people pay attention to life's destiny? Whoa, you guys are up, uh, over, t over the top today. All right, Any anyone else wants to pick up on that? should be more marriages in the next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you guys are all looking. <laughs> um, uh, I, I did, when you talked about destiny, if I could just yes, touch yes. on that. I will say, be, just be careful when you're dating someone and you're like, well, they're into missions and I'm into business or well they're into this but I'm into that because you never know what the Lord wants to do you never know how the Lord wants to couple two things together and so many people will use that as a, a, a meter like well I guess this is it like everything else checks off but this but you do not know the Lord's creative power to bring those two things together so be careful when you when you start weighing that in your relationship all right, I have a few, so I want, I want you guys to answer these quickly because of time. Um, touch on cross-cultural dating. What does that look like? It's easy to date an American because you're an American and you all know, or you are all Brazilian, so you know you're Brazilian. What happens when you date across culture? What does that look like? I mean, my wife is from South Korea. We met in South Korea. We got married after like a time over there and it everybody's story is different right every culture is different so my advice would be just um to be willing and flexible to understand the complexities of different cultures because my wife's parents my wife lived in the philippines for three years america for six years so out of korea for nine years she goes back to korea her parents are like you can't leave anymore you got to stay <laughs> Here comes this white guy hanging around the cafe where she was working where her parents came and so it was about a year and a half of really hard uphill battle where yeah. the parents did not like me and did, didn't want to speak to me and didn't want me around so culturally there's a there are some things to just be flexible about i should say i trust the lord my she trusted the lord but we had to be cognizant of cultural differences and we it knew it takes more work doesn't it when, when you're dating across I guess. cultures <laughs> we made it through thank the <laughs> lord um but we had to stay engaged for a year yeah. where we would rather have gotten married sooner yeah. but out of kind of respect for her parents and their culture and there's just some different things okay so this is culture across nations what about culture within culture like a subculture because these two are americans but you are brazilian american and you are african-american well <laughs> oh, tell me, what, what was that like? <laughs> um, I'm, try I'm trying to figure out how to explain it because I think like what Tyler was saying is you have to really be open to the other culture because yeah. for me, like I'm adopted, my parents are white, like my culture is very white. Oh, sorry, just, I didn't like, even realize that's that. That's just the reality. I may be black, but my culture is very white. He's black, but he's white. And okay, <laughs> all right, I know. I get, I get it. No, I get it. Yes. Yeah. And so her being Brazilian American, her parents are from Brazil. Like yes. they did not grow up here. And so their first language is Portuguese and their culture is very Brazilian. And so even communicating to her parents, it's like, I don't know how to communicate all the time because of the fact that they want to speak in Portuguese. And I'm like, I don't understand you. <laughs> and if I was just kind of like, you know what, I'm just going to push it away and not have anything to do with it, then that would have like been really hard in our relationship it probably wouldn't have yeah. gone this far and, but because I was open and I'm like okay like I'll learn Portuguese I'll learn how to like understand what you guys are saying I'll meet you halfway if you can meet me halfway and so it it creates this openness and like almost like a circle of like everyone's trusting each other and everyone's trying to do their best onto the other person and when you're not open to the other culture you're just shutting that off and you're shutting off another aspect of what the Lord's doing in another culture another another part of the person because that's her entire life like yeah. me saying oh i don't want to learn portuguese oh i don't want to do anything brazilian like that you guys do it's like 
that's the way she grew up. That's the way she yeah. is. So her family's is. like this. My family may not be like that, yeah. but I have to be open to it. Count the cost. Who is interested in a cross-cultural relationship? Yeah, hand. Come on, don't be ashamed. I'm interested in that too. Come on, put up your hand. All right, put down your hands. Who is interested in just dating within your American culture or within your culture? Because I remember a guy said to me once, I only want to date within my culture. You only want to date within your culture. Who is that? <laughs> a guy at the back did this. <laughs> You only want to date within your culture. I see Mr. Indian at the back. Good, thank you for your, all right. He says. <laughs> He's like, only Indian, all right. There's nothing wrong with it, yeah, let's no, just say. No, absolutely like, not. More grace and more yeah. power for you, that's there's, fine. There's better food in other cultures, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's talk, we have seven minutes. Let's talk about money in dating, money. Money, money, money. Who spends? Who should spend? When should you spend? How, how should it be shared? Should it be not shared? I mean, if you're trying to impress a girl, yes, buy her food, <laughs> buy her coffee. <laughs> however, yes. <laughs> however, <laughs> after the um, trying to impress them comes, understand that we are kind of all in the same boat and we have like five cents to our name for a few years straight okay so there does come a point where after you guys are friends and you're like okay i understand your situation you're working hard like you're really doing that valet i get it um this money is hard earned it's my turn i'm gonna buy tacos tonight we're gonna go to taps and you can get whatever you want with a budget of 10 I like, bucks, I like praise that. the Lord. I like that. <laughs> um, I like, I like yeah. that. So if you're you, trying to you impress are, someone, then yeah, you purchase for them. So you are for the partnership. For After partnership. a while, the woman should start contributing, right? Yes. Men say amen to that. We don't want the guys to go broke. I, no, I think you right. also have to take into account the culture of the other person. Because other nations, like the man does all the financial stuff. That's a good point. And even here in America, like my parents are a lot older, so they taught me I'm the one that's supposed to provide. I'm the one that's okay. supposed to pay. I open the doors. Like that's kind of how I was raised. And for her, it's like she was raised very independent. And so she's like, don't do that for me. Don't do this. And I'm like, I, I need to. Like I don't like, like – and so you have to understand like who you're dating. Like you have to understand their side of the spectrum kind of thing. And Hold you on, have to me, communicate sorry. it. No, go ahead. Let me ask, who are the independent women in, in here that you just love to do everything for yourself? <laughs> independent woman. I see you. Okay. <laughs> I see, okay, all right. You finish your point? Yeah, because like even in friendship, like for when we were friends, like I would always pay for her groceries. I would pay, like I would take her trash out. Not because I was trying to impress her, because oh, as nice. someone who was raised by someone that teaches you respect women, you like do this for them. Like I do that for my sisters. Like I don't do that just because okay. I'm interested, but I do that because that's what you're supposed to do. But that's just because that's the way I was raised. Yeah. In other cultures, it's not like that. Yeah. So you have to kind of take that into account. Alex is remarkable, he is. Let me see the, the hands of those women, no, women, women. Um, you believe in partnership. You believe in helping to pay for a Starbucks every now and again. Let me see the women who are like that. Okay, hands down. Let me see the women. You want the men to pay at all times. <laughs> are you from Brazil? <laughs> all right, we have five minutes. We have five minutes. We have five minutes. Okay. How involved should your parents be in your dating? I, if you're like 29, 30, something and up, like I think you're old enough at this point, you should be old enough to be able to handle the, the relationship on your own, but which, which is what happened to me. So we didn't ask like permission to our parents. We like shared with our parents and they came alongside us kind of thing. Not my wife's so much, but after time, but <laughs> Yeah, for anyone who's like 29 and up, like, I don't think it's, it has to be over spiritualized or over, we gotta, I gotta get my parents' blessing and all these things. Like. But think about culture though, because like the Indian culture, I'm mindful of that. I mean, parents' blessings, that is an important it's, it's thing. It's also like that in Korea, but it's in, in I, I kind of, we, <laughs> we got around that. How many of you, you're here, and you, for you, your parents have to be involved? Oh my word. 
Okay, I'm not saying it's bad. All right. To, I'm not saying involved, yeah. don't be involved in the relationship. I'm talking about yes. the decision to marry someone. Okay, the decision to marry. If you're getting married, the decision to, your parents have to be involved? Okay, all right, put on your hands. Let me see the ones who you say your parents, yeah, okay, they don't have to be involved. Okay. So that's what, a lot. Of, no, that's fine. This is interesting. So though. what if the Lord is, is leading you to marry somebody and they're not in agreement? Yeah. That's a question to Miss Renee. Seriously. Yeah, that is a question. I mean, you know, you, you better be led of God. <laughs> I'm telling you, because you don't know who's going to speak what into your life. Yeah. You better know the Lord for yourself. Yeah. Amen. I'm telling you, I've walked through a lot of stuff. You, you, you got to know, just know the voice. Know the voice of the Lord and know what he's speaking to you so that you make right choices. It's very, it sounds serious. It's like your guys are playing and then I come with the serious stuff. Then you guys are playing and then I come with the serious no, stuff. It, it's but you good, know, it's, it's balance, it's, but it's good balance though. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> Praise God. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm mama. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, Praise two God. more before we go. Two more before we go. But remember, tonight at 11 o'clock is all night prayer meeting in the Wayne Man's Auditorium. Tonight. And then on Monday, you guys are going to be going to third year, right? After, after chapel. So keep those two things in mind. So tonight at 11 o'clock, all night prayer meeting. All right, two more questions quickly. How involved should your friends be in your dating process? Depends on the friends. Friends. Definitely depends on the friends. I think you need to know who your real friends are. Right. Keep your true ones, the ones that will be honest with you, those right. are your real friends. If you have acquaintances or people that you love and like, that's good. It's healthy, but they should not have bearing on your relationship. The people you allow to have bearing in your life, though, don't push them away when it gets difficult. Pull them close. Okay, you were going to say something? Friends? Same thing? Yeah. Only one? If they're good, bring them in. <laughs> Okay, um, what if it, and I end on this one, what if it doesn't work out in dating and you have to walk away? What should that look like? Somebody said, ooh, ooh, it doesn't always work out. You can have multiple Starbucks, doesn't always mean it will work out. Yeah. I think, I think that the reality is like, Especially being like in this environment where in a Bible school, it's like the first person you date has to be the person that you marry. That's not true because um, it, it might not work out. And that literally is OK, because that's a lesson learned. The Lord will use it. Amen. If that if it comes to that, that you're like, man, I really don't think that this is what the Lord has for me. Be mature. Have a conversation about it. Don't just ghost them. Um, and just bring it up respectfully, you know, like it's not just like deuces, this isn't working for me anymore, but you have invested into that person. You yeah, care about them at least a little. So have just a genuine conversation. Like what, what would you say? No, I like that. I really do. But yeah. what exactly would you say? Like, it, this is when, not working. Do all? you need a template, sir? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all need a template. <laughs> I, ha I have a book on that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I... Yeah, what would you say if it doesn't work out? I think it depends why it's not working out. Yeah, and that's sure. why you need to communicate. Yeah. But I think that doing everything in love. Like, yes, literally, absolutely. if you are breaking up, break up with love in your heart for this person. Not as, you're not my wife anymore. You're not my husband anymore. But, hey, I love you. This is not working out, though. And I wish you the best. Um, if it was bad terms, I don't necessarily recommend still being friends after that. Um, I think it's good to draw that boundary and like, hey, I think we need some time. But um, yeah, I think when you date for the purpose of marriage and you're dating and you're looking at their values and all these things, when you get to a point where you realize I'm not going to marry you, I don't, I can't be, that's not uh, a bad thing. That means that you've dated well. That means you've dated successfully and that you have come to your decision when you're, it doesn't mean you date in order that I'm going to marry you. It means with the intention of marriage. So if there's a point that you're like, this isn't going to work in marriage. I don't see you as the father of my children. Um, I care about you. Then have that healthy conversation. And don't be afraid that you've wasted time. You've dated well. God uses everything for his glory. And that's just it. I, I just want to throw this in. One sec, Miss Winnie. I know we're after 12. Yeah. Can you just bear with us a minute or two? Yeah. She's like, I, 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 Thank I, you. I appreciate that. I just, I'm sorry. I just want to throw this in. 
you know, this is 2024, amen? <laughs> so there are situations where girls and guys fall, okay? Say you're in a situation and you fall, and then you decide, okay, this is not really who God has for me, okay? And then you get in another situation, and you say, oh, this is him, and then you fall. That's two times. When you come out of that situation, you need to stop. You need to stop because you're making wrong decisions. And it could be because something the Holy Spirit is trying to work on the inside of you. Maybe you need healing. Maybe you need wisdom. Maybe you need guidance. You know, but you don't get in a relationship to have sex, guys. That's, that's, you don't try things out. Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. That's reality, guys. We're Christians, you know, and it happens. It happens. Whether we want to admit it or not, it does happen. And it's very important that you know that God doesn't condemn us. He doesn't condemn you because you fall. But he wants you to repent and he wants you to stop. Stop. Sit back and see what the Holy Spirit is saying. Maybe it's not time for you to get married right now. Maybe you shouldn't be dating. Maybe you need to focus on something else. I That's mean, true. I know we're talking about dating right now. But I know that there's other situations that have occurred in this audience. I know there are. And there's no condemnation, guys. Jesus loves you. He loves you. Amen. Just repent and keep growing. Amen. You were, you were going to say something yeah. else? I was, I was going to add on a more practical side of things. Because we're in an age where everything's digital, everything's posted online, everything's, everybody knows everything about what's going on in your relationship. <laughs> um, something that we did when we were even dating is we didn't post it on Instagram. We didn't really, people didn't even find out until like maybe a year after. Oh, like some people were nice. still finding out, oh, you guys are together? I'm like, yeah, because it's our relationship. It's not yeah. for everybody to know. And that helps Somebody it keep the friendship right. there because of the fact that when people know about your relationship, when people only see the good things, then you see all your posts and they're like, oh, you guys look so great together. You're this, that, and the other. And then when it's not working out behind the scenes, it's like, but everybody knows, like, we got to keep it yes. an image. Always, and it's like, worry. that's it's not good. how it's it goes. And that's right. what breaks up friendships. That's what breaks, it makes it to where it's messy. Mm. And then people know, and it's like, uh, you didn't pick the right person now. It's like, now what, like, it just becomes a, a thing when it doesn't need to be a thing. Like, not everybody needs to know what's going on. Like, that's how you can have a mature relationship. It's just keeping it to each other. And when you want to bring people in that circle, then you bring people in. And when it becomes, this is the, actually the line that we're going is marriage. It's like, okay, let's start posting more. Let's start talking to people more about how we're together. Yeah. Like, that's, that's the better way to do it when everything's so out there nowadays. Yeah. Yes, yes. And that, like, doesn't give you a license to hide. Like, that's not what that is. Yeah. But it gives you a safe place to try dating. And if you fail, that's okay. And, and if you succeed, praise God, you know. But it just gives you that safe place where it's like, okay, like, we're just figuring this out together, you know. And so without having everyone's other opinions or influence into that relationship, that really is just us and the Lord. So, yeah. Or you can just... You know, post the pictures and break up in a healthy way. Delete all the pictures and let everyone wonder about: Are they together or not? All the pictures are, they, are gone. I Just let them wonder. If... It's fine. Taylor, Taylor is very pragmatic. Before before you guys go, before you guys go, obviously you heard from them. Doesn't mean you know them or you have seen them for the first time. So starting with you here, say your name and your role here at CFNI. My name is Tyler Maxi. I work in the development department. <laughs> Thank you, one person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Come on, give it up for Tyler! I work in the development department at HQ with um, this guy and with Hani Lindsay and yeah. yeah. Uh, my name is Becca Carmo Nicholson. HOT. Shout out my hospitality team. I'm the hospitality coordinator here at CFNI. Um, and yeah, that's pretty good. Amen. My name is Alexander Nicholson. Uh, Uh, I work in the enrollment department as the scholarship advisor. So. I'm Christiana. I'm the dean of women here. I love you. Me oh, oh, my name. 
it's Renee, Renee Tomlinson. And I'm the, I'm the, I'm the prayer coordinator. I'm the prayer coordinator and I teach. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, stand with me. Thank you so much for leaning in and listening. Hopefully, some of the things you heard, you know, bless you and yet you'll be able to take it with you and strengthen your relationships. Have a wonderful weekend. God bless you. We thank you and thank you so much for being a part of CFNI. See you guys. Let's give it up for the team one more time. One more time. One more time. 